from England. I have purchased my first PC in 18 years and it's a gaming PC. Not just any PC, but one that looks amazing in my lounge. And that is a Fractal Design North. In this video, we're going to talk about a couple of things. First of all, the PC, my home cinema system, but also all the furniture. I didn't mean to make a long video, but I thought, you know what, while I'm making a video about the PC, I might as well do a video about everything else that people might want to know about. And if you're someone who lives in a house or apartment that has a small living room, then this video might be a little bit of an inspiration for what you can do with the space, how you can use it, how you can design it as well. I don't want to put any labels on my style, but you can call it minimalist, you can call it cozy, you can call it natural, you choose. I hope that you like the video and if you have any questions, feel free to fire away in the comments. Let's get straight into the juicy stuff, specs. The processor is an AMD Ryzen 7 5800X3D. The graphics card is an NVIDIA RTX 4070. I have 16 gigabytes of DDR4 Corsair RGB RAM, one terabyte SSD. And most importantly, the computer comes in this gorgeous fractal design north charcoal case just look at it it was meant to be in this lounge this is the reason why i purchased this this computer but you might also see next to it there's an xbox series x that i've had since launch day so why did i buy a gaming computer i love my series x it's sleek it's stealthy it's super quiet way quieter than my ps4 pro that i had roughly four years ago but I've been a bit disappointed by this current generation of gaming consoles. I think the fully optimized games only started appearing last year. But for the most part, I feel like a lot of titles look like PS4 games, but running at a higher frame rate. And I'm just missing a little bit of that eye candy pop. And what really triggered me to order a PC was watching the digital foundry comparison of pc against consoles for alan wake 2 and that's when i thought that's it i'm just tired of not being able to have it all like high frame rate high resolution and full visual details as well i did actually look at a pc roughly a year and a half ago but i couldn't find anything that i liked i did consider a 4060 uh, base PC but then I learned that that is not a major upgrade over an Xbox or a PS5 especially if you would like to play games with ray tracing and I've been very curious about ray tracing so hence why I purchased a 4070 which is almost like minimum levels of GPU power in order to be able to run ray tracing at an okay frame rate so it is basically a mid-range pc so what is a mid-range pc let's start from an entry level or low-end pc that is a pc that can run games at 1080p at ultra settings targeting roughly 120 frames per second a mid-range pc is one that can run games at ultra settings at 1440p also achieving roughly 120 frames per second a high-end PC is one that can run games at ultra settings 4k and achieve roughly 120 frames per second mid-range for me is a nice sweet spot it's not too expensive and if I wanted to go up to a 4080 that would have significantly increased the cost of my PC so this cost me 1580 pounds an RTX 4080 would have added another 600 pounds to the cost which isn't really worth it you might be able to see that i have a tv here it's a 4k lgc one and i'm glad that i got the 4070 instead of the 4060 because actually although the 4070 isn't considered a 4k graphics card it's actually a bit of an entry level 4k card because i run my games at 4k which i didn't expect i thought 1440p would be good but it looks a little bit fuzzy and soft 
it's not a resolution that scales well to 4K. And therefore, I'm absolutely chuffed that I can run some games at 4K, but that is with DLSS and frame generation enabled. So these are like jargons that I've only recently learned. Like, you know, I was genuinely clueless when I ordered this PC because a lot of things have changed since I bought a tower like 20 years ago. The best analogy for AI frame generation and upscaling is taking a normal car and put it on a racetrack. The performance wouldn't be amazing, but if you put racing tires on it in racing brakes, you will be able to achieve higher top speed, carry more speed around the corners, and go around the circuit a lot faster without having seen an increase in fuel consumption or weight. So that is the best analogy. For DLSS and frame generation, the cons are latency. I haven't experienced that latency yet. Like that's how non-discernible it is. However, I would imagine if you play like Call of Duty and other competitive shooter games, you might notice the latency a little bit, especially if you're someone who's used to playing at a frame rate of um, two or 300. But for me, in some of the games that I have played, I really haven't noticed any cons whatsoever. So it's brilliant technology. But should you buy a mid-range PC? Maybe, maybe not. I think the best thing is to buy a computer that serves your need. Most games now, especially popular ones like Minecraft, Fortnite, PUBG, and other competitive online games, they don't require the most powerful PC. Even with an entry-level PC, or a PC that's five years old, you should be able to play at high settings at a decent frame rate if you're targeting 1080p or 1440p. But if you're playing on a 4K TV, then I think a mid-range computer or a high-end one is beneficial. And getting back to the case, it is beautiful. Just look at it. When I saw it, I basically ordered a computer within a few days. Like I knew it would look great in here and it's not always easy to find a computer case that fits well inside a lounge because a lot of computers have RGB or they just look like computers which is not a bad thing I am a geek and I would even buy a white PC in the future that has a lot of glass panels and RGB and all of that but I wanted a computer that blends in with the lounge and usually you might even just buy a mini ETX case or a black case. But this one, it doesn't just blend in, but it actually complements everything that's in here. It is truly stunning. Like, <laughs> I love it. And I look at it absolutely every single day. There's two choices. There is a white one. I think the white one has oak wood panels. And this is the charcoal case that has uh, walnut panels. And interestingly, it's made in Sweden or the company Fractal. They are based in Sweden. And surprise, surprise, I'm actually from Sweden, specifically from Göteborg, which is my hometown where Fractal is actually based. But I didn't know this until last week. And I've had this computer for like four weeks now. A little bit of a nice factoid. Mine has a glass panel on the side. You, you can also choose to have a mesh panel as well, if you prefer that. And the glass one is quite nice and it just breaks up the design a little bit. And it also adds a little bit of glass to the lounge, making it look exquisite. Uh, I could have purchased the mini ETX case and that is what I wanted, but I was quite clueless and I did a bit of research and I couldn't find enough arguments for buying each X case because nowadays computer components are massive and they generate a lot of heat. And from what I saw online, mini ETX cases are best if you're doing a entry level or mid range build. I have seen builds with a 4070, 4080 and 4090, but you risk running into thermal issues that that might not be a problem during winter when the ambient temperature is relatively cool in your house. Some people do undervolt their PCs in mini, mini ETX cases. But then I'm thinking, 
why buy a powerful CPU and GPU only to then run it at lower voltage? And it's more likely than not that PC components are going to get bigger and manufacturers of components frequently change the locations of some of the ports and stuff. And if you buy a small case, there is that risk that if you upgrade, you might not be able to fit certain components. And I, I do see myself as someone who likes to tinker. So I might change a few components in the future. And that's where it's good, good to have a slightly larger case. And this is an ATX case. And that allows not just the option to fit larger components, but you also need space to put them in and also run cables around them. And but things to definitely look out for if you're buying a case is whether or not you can fit a graphics processor that has three fans instead of two. And some graphics cards like 4080s and 4090s, they can also be very thick, which means that they can even block two or three PCI ports. So you need a bit of room for that. This computer can fit a 4090. I do not have one, but I might upgrade to one when I can afford it in five years time, or someone might lend me one for a couple of weeks. And that is where it would be nice to just be able to open the case, put it in, and it's done in less than two minutes. I can also fit two fans at the top for the radiator. This would be for a 280 mil radiator. There's not enough space for a 360 mil radiator. So that is something to factor in. But yeah, with the card in, I have space for like three other PCI components, which is quite good if I need them in the future for fitting like a video capture card or something else. But it's a high quality case. It feels good and it's not fingerprinting magnet either, which is lovely because this environment, especially with the rug, when you build a PC, you also typically need to decide whether or not to RGB or to not RGB. And I think, why not both? And that's exactly what I've done. This PC looks as good with RGB as it does without RGB on. And also RGB is optional. I can just switch it off if I don't want it. But I also believe that RGB doesn't need to be distracting. Like it doesn't need to be the center of attention. It can also be complementary. So I tend to set RGB to orange and then it acts like ambient lighting, which is quite nice. But also if I'm feeling a bit upbeat, I put on some crazy colors, have a little bit of fun, but I can essentially pick and choose, which is good. And some do like a stealth black design as well, which actually with the glass panel on, you cannot see the white RGB fans. So this computer came with a be quiet air cooler. So I did look into water cooling like or liquid cooling, but I found that it's quite expensive, especially for the water cooling that I like. And also more crucially, you can get air cooling that's, that is just as good, but for even less money. So I decided to go with an air cooled look and I embarked on a little bit of a project that you can watch in one of my videos, which is me essentially taking a deep cool AK 620 and upgrading the fans to RGB ones. So watch that video. And I think the big cooler in there looks quite cool. Like it's quite different to just like, you know, air cooling, but who knows in the future, I might choose water cooling if I get a more powerful CPU. So the RGB is basically one fan here, another fan at the back. And I also have an RGB fan in the middle. And this is a display which shows the CPU temperature and utilization as well. You can choose either, or there's also a third setting that cycles between them two. And there's also a bit of RGB light in there. And the motherboard is really good. It has two addressable RGB headers and it has three non-addressable ones. And there's also a tiny bit of LED on the motherboard as well. And it's an Asus one that comes with software that enables you to control all the RGB really seamlessly. And it's really cool. And I also got some RGB RAM as well. As you can see, one of the RAMs are a bit blocked 
which means that yeah it was a little bit of waste of money to upgrade it but it was only like eight pounds to upgrade both of them to rgb ones so why not and i was lucky to fit the cooler there as well the amount of clearance is tiny but this is the good thing about having a big case where there's room to fit a full size cooler like this with clearance and there's actually space in here to mount the gpu vertically if you would like and it's nice and for example my kids they think the rgb is quite cool it's pretty snazzy and i'm someone who prefers mood lighting and ambient lighting over overhead lighting like i pretty much never use my lights that are ceiling mounted like i prefer lighting to be a little bit lower and also with this case when i'm sitting on the couch i don't see the rgb it's not distracting at all because i don't want the lights to be brighter than the tv because i'm one of those people who get annoyed if there's like a light source near the tv whether it's a clock or speakers with like blue light or red light which really annoyed me so the rgb isn't distracting whatsoever i only see it when i walk past like if i'm going to the kitchen to fetch water or snacks or something and it's quite nice to just glance at the temperature and utilization as well on the plus side that fan at the back colors on the door there which again serves as ambient lighting but it's not sharp enough to distract from the tv so that is my rgb setup and there's really nothing in there that, that i'm considering adding rgb wise i think what i have in there is enough and i did consider like a liquid cooler with a radiator and rgb fans at the top but this is a computer that sits on the floor and therefore rgb fans that are ceiling mounted would be absolutely wasted because i wouldn't see them and that's why i don't have any fans up there and that concludes the chat about the pc if you have any questions please ask me in the comments next to it you have an xbox series x and i have some surprising thoughts about pc versus xbox series x some of these thoughts have not been raised in some of the videos that i've watched but that deserve a video on its own so i'll probably publish one in the next couple of weeks if you have any ideas or questions that you would like answered please let me know now for the tour of my home cinema setup so this is a full dolby vision dolby atmos home cinema system and it's also the reason why i game here instead of upstairs because why would i not want to use my pc with the tv instead of my computer monitor and this tv is an lg c1 55 inch i've had that for two and a half years now there's not much more to say about lg c1 c c2 and c3 everyone everyone knows that they're great they have g-sync free sync v-sync so if you're a gamer they're brilliant because the variable refresh rates as well it works incredibly well with the pc with the xbox and it's oled colors pop and everything it could be brighter and that's been well documented like lg tvs especially the c1s aren't as bright as they should be but i believe the c3 one but i believe the c3 is a little bit better and for sound i have a sound bar a samsung q900a so the q900a is just the sound bar with the subwoofer however you can buy rear speakers for it and that's exactly what i've done because if you don't buy the rear speakers you could potentially buy the q90 q950 that comes with the rear speakers but they are essentially the same thing like the difference between the q900 and q950 is that the 950 comes with rear speakers and my previous soundbar was a yamaha ysp 2500 and the way that I choose my soundbar is to buy those that have dialogue clarity. Because it is important for me that I can hear what the dialogues are. And this, is, this isn't just when the volume is high, but also when the volume is low. Because I have young kids aged 5 and 7. And if they sleep upstairs, I want to be able to hear all the dialogues without having to crank up the volume. So that is one of the main criteria that I look for. And the Yamaha, I, I 
had before when I purchased that. That was around 900 pounds. It was like the flagship soundbar 7.1, but I purchased it for around 400 pounds, like open box at a basically like on eBay through one of the big retailers. And I thought that was brilliant. And I didn't expect there to be such a big leap when it comes to buying a new one. Like this one is so heavy. I can barely lift it with one finger. And I think in total it has 22 speakers. There'll be Atmos upwards firing speakers. Uh, but the highlight are the rear speakers. They make a huge difference. Like when they're on, you feel like you are in the movie, especially if there's an object flying from behind or diagonally, you know what's going to hit the people in the movie before they do. And it adds like a nice level of immersion. I know some people don't like wires on you know the wall or etc but that is outweighed by the performance it is quite nice and also with these rear speakers they are wireless that means that all they need is a power outlet and then the sound is transmitted wirelessly and that wireless transmission is bulletproof no dropouts whatsoever i did consider another sony setup that comes with four individual wireless speakers but that system is wi-fi based and I was reading about people having dropouts and having issues with it. And I was thinking, I'm not going to spend 2000 pounds on speakers and then spend 50 hours per year on forums trying to diagnose a problem. So I went with these ones and the subwoofer, really powerful as well. I think the distance between my couch and the soundbar is probably minimum. For the power of this one it's about two and a half meter distance like it has so much power at volume 14 or 15 at my distance people will say oh you know that's getting a little bit too loud but as 15 16 it can go up to 100 <laughs> so it can blow the roof off really amazing lots of muscle both in games and videos and even just like boring youtube stuff like i'm a massive sound fanatic i love good sound and believe that it's as important as good visuals and this subwoofer it's a good subwoofer i wouldn't say it's the absolute best best i think the bass could be a little bit tighter but it's not like a loose boomy bass that like really annoys you but for its size i think it could have been a little bit better um, but overall as a package this was i think it was about 900 pounds or something like that i got it for 600 pounds i'm someone who tries to find good bargains and try to save money and that's where i bought this and the subwoofer for a good price and then i sourced the rear speakers at a really cheap price elsewhere on ebay because a lot of the retailers they have outlet stores there so i highly recommend it and you can see some relics here <laughs> blu-ray player that i no longer use and sony ps3 i don't use either of them anymore i have been wanting to replace them with something but i don't know what and i've taken them away once but then it looks bad like because something is meant to be here and i actually don't mind that they are black because they just blend in like they don't distract me in any way and they're just quite nice and I also forgot to add about this soundbar is that it does variable refresh rate pass through. It supports 4K 60 pass through as well. It doesn't support 4K 120 pass through, which was a criteria of mine because I got it after I got the Xbox. But then with the Xbox, hardly any games support 120 frames per second. And if it is, if they do, it tends to be first person shooter games which i don't play anymore i used to play counter strike 2.0 really competitively but i no longer do it so like therefore I, i've not really played that many games in uh, at 120 frames per second on the xbox and this soundbar works very well with all my devices it works well with the tv with the xbox and with apple tv as well i know it sounds obvious like duh of course it would work you, you know it's just hdmi you plug it in but trust me buying a soundbar or even a receiver for your speakers is an absolute pain 
take the Sonos Arc for example with that one there are dropout no not dropout issues I think there are crackles or pops people are experiencing pops and crackles with the Xbox and they're quite loud and there's other soundbars that have various issues whether it's with a specific TV or Apple TV etc so I spent months researching a TV that I was confident works perfectly with the TV with no bugs and that the soundbar works with Apple TV and then it works with PS5 and Xbox Series X because some work fine but then Dolby Vision there might be some issues with that or like it's an absolute minefield so that is one of the reasons why I have the soundbar is because there are hardly any documented issues especially with the LG C1 and the extra HDMI input means that I can plug in all my devices into it instead of the TV which is a nice backup to have because for some devices you're best plugging them into the TV and others best plugging them into the soundbar but if the soundbar starts acting up I know I can plug them into the TV if the TV acts up I know that I can plug them in here I know just complicated geeky stuff but it's really important to know because usually if an appliance has a firmware or software issue it's unlikely to be rectified like manufacturers of TVs and hi-fi systems like they don't have a good track record when it comes to software so like never buy TV or an audio appliance that's a little bit flawed with the expectation that that issue will be resolved because it might not be resolved and then you're stuck with a device that really annoys you and to my left and right you can see the rear speakers that's the location of them and they're up firing as well i've never had up firing speakers before but the effect is really convincing especially in the first harry potter movie when they're playing quidditch you can literally hear them flying right above you so it's not a gimmick i expected it to be a gimmick i thought it was just like an extra feature but it does work really well and these have up firing speakers and front firing speakers as well in the software you can change the volume of them so obviously the one to my right is a little bit quieter because it's closer to me but they're so good that i don't really go to cinema because the sound system here is super punchy so it's been like a really worthwhile investment and it's a nice home cinema i haven't purchased everything in one go i've purchased it gradually over time and i tend to not buy products right when they come out i feel like you tend to get a better deal a year later or even two years later especially on some very expensive items like i recently looked at an lg g2 tv i'm not gonna buy one but i was almost tempted because the price discount now compared with last year is substantial it's almost a percent so yeah i am really someone who likes to save money so if you gradually buy things bit by bit then you will save time and while i'm on the couch let's speak about furniture so this is an ikea couch it's a very popular ikea couch that is also a sofa bed it has storage underneath here and it's a three-seater one and you might wondering why is it beige because it's not available in beige or actually it might be now but for many years it's mainly been gray so what I did is that I purchased a cover for it you see that's the gray couch underneath it's a third party cover because I've had this couch for like nine years and uh, I wasn't in the mood to spend money on a new couch like some couches are four thousand pounds or six thousand pounds sure you'll get a lot of value out of them because cost per use is low over like 10 or 20 years but I would rather spend that money on something else and I'm comfortable enough on this so it's a case of basically prioritizing and I found online that you can buy covers for them third-party covers and they come in a wealth of ch choices in terms of colors and finishes there's even suede velvet cotton etc etc I think the covers are around oh, 170 or almost 200 pounds and I was almost gonna buy one new but then I looked on eBay 
and so at that moment in time someone has had listed this one for sale and i made them an offer they declined the offer i placed the bid and i ended up winning the auction because i was the only one who placed a bid and i got it for less money than the offer that i had made and it spruced everything up i've had it for two and a half years it still looks good it's hard wearing i've never washed it and i have young kids so you can see it doesn't look wrinkly or out of shape or anything so i highly recommend it if you have one of these couches to look for a cover and beige is a nice choice like it works with the lounge neutral colors i would have gone for a little bit more daring choices but i would i wasn't sure what i wanted so i went for a neutral theme knowing that i can always spike things with a bit of color in form of scatter cushions or throws so i really like it especially the warm tones because in the uk it's overcast very often and i'm someone who's affected by sunlight and overcast like it really affects my mood so for me having this these like warmer tones when there isn't enough space on the couch people can sit on the floor and funny enough my children enjoy sitting on the floor and even other kids as well like they like to squirm wriggle around and this rug becomes you know another place to sit for them roll around and be a little bit free and that is all thanks to this d pile rug from ikea and this is the largest size that it's available in and it's perfect for my lounge because down here i have antico flooring which can be a little bit cold but this d pile rug gives you some nice soft texture like when you see it you want to walk on it and when your feet touches something soft like you you know you feel uh, you know a bit more at ease internally you need to sit down i love having a small cushion i use it as a bit of a headrest extension so my pc is in the lounge how do i use it from the couch let me show you i have this beauty it's a super practical lap desk i've only had it for one month but i wish i had it sooner it's so amazing that i even use it on my bed and I almost feel more comfortable on it here than I do at my desk. So take the mouse, put it there, and then the keyboard goes there. All in one, there's a mouse pad, there is wrist rest as well, and there's space for my phone, space for the iPad. So I also use it with the iPad, because uh, I have an iPad with a keyboard. So I just pluck this off and I use the mouse with the ipad as well it's it's honestly amazing and i like the colors in the sense that it blends in well with the lounge and it's very stable as well like when you move it like things don't just just slide off and it has a carrying handle because i do carry it between my house and my girlfriend's because anywhere i go if i bring this with me i effectively have a desk that's how great it is it's a portable desk and the mouse that i use is an mx master 3 this is a well-known um, lg logitech mouse or logi so i'm not going to speak too much about it but it's it's my favorite mouse when it comes to features but also comfort because my wrist gets a little bit sore uh, if i use the trackpad or something else so you know i like having a big mouse that i can hold like that and which leaves my hand feeling nice and ergonomic and the keyboard I have is a Perix keyboard. It's the same brand as my cat keyboard that I have upstairs. And it's a German brand. The quality is amazing. This might look like a super simple keyboard, but it's packed with features. You can connect two Bluetooth devices. You can also use it wired. It has a built-in USB hub. It has USB-C charging. It has backlight. And it's small enough to fit here and small enough to fit on a desk. I don't want the number pad because then I feel like the distance from keyboard to mouse is quite long, but it's a really good keyboard and it didn't cost me that much money either. So this is really where I sit and this is where I tend to play my games. Uh, but more often than not, I play with a controller. Uh, before I got this, I had one of those like small, keyboardy controllers that i thought was going to be perfect because it's great for the lounge that i would only need it for 
switching on the PC and not much else except for clearing a few pop-ups but I found it quite slippery fidgety and slow and, un and uncomfortable to type on and I thought let me just buy a normal keyboard and mouse and I feel much quicker here much more comfortable and it means that I can also do some casual browsing or researching before a game not that I do too much productive work on the TV because it is an OLED and burning although a small risk is still a risk and when I'm finished with this I take it take the mouse keyboard off and I plunk this on the side easy peasy to have a feature item in a lounge an item that you love the most oh wait a minute I'm facing the wrong way this is the real face and my feature item is this unit it's by mage.com it's a company that existed in the UK and they were like the first furniture brand to offer like design-led furniture at a really affordable price so this was 399 pounds and it's influenced by 1970s influenced by German and Italian designs from the 70s especially Bauhaus movements and similar and it's stunning the circular design makes it look like nice and soft and welcoming it's not intimidating and the quality is really good as well and the great thing is that it was pre-assembled like all I had to add was the handles and the feet and in here oh my dumping storage of shame of spare cables and phone boxes and whatnot just like random stuff in there games and blu-rays and stuff that need to be put somewhere and it's nice and it's also one of the reasons why i purchased a 55 inch and not a 65 inch tv because i do not want to overpower it it's pretty and some people don't even put a tv on it they just put vases or artwork etc and it is absolutely one of my favorite items in here and i doubt that i will ever sell it because it's really unique and um, it's gorgeous in case you haven't noticed the pc is sitting on a shelf i purchased this shelf a few days ago because i knew that i would be crucified <laughs> if i uploaded the video with the pc on, on a carpet and rightfully i should be crucified however before I got the shelf, only half the PC was on a carpet and the rear half that has the intake was sitting on top of a book at, about, at the back. I don't have a fetish with wood. It's purely coincidental that it's wooden. I had a look at some shelves online and then I bumped into this one, 28 pounds down to 16 pounds with, with basically dimensions that are perfect for this tower, both width and length and I didn't want to spend any more hours researching so I got it also because it's made from wood I can always spray it black I can sand it down I can do other things to it if I feel like okay there's a little bit too much wood in here but yeah it's purely coincidental and it's quite nice because it rises the PC and typically if you rise things up they are perceived to be worth more so if you're ever at someone's house ask them if you can sit on the throne because then to be elevated above everyone else and because it's elevated it means that the design and rgb etc is more visible as i approach the pc from that side and i've also ridden the xbox the xbox is on a circular stand i'll try to grab i got two of these for four pounds from amazon really good nice and circular and it gets the xbox off the floor and naturally you might say that hey it's still too close to the carpet um, but actually the main intake is at the back not necessarily under here like there's still some intakes at the bottom but I think regardless of whether it's at two three inches higher it will still ingest a bit of dust purely because this is where the rug is and I'm quite limited on space and and also configurations in the lounge so therefore things just have to be where the current they are and the plants are sitting on one of the nest of tables. I have two more that are smaller and they cost me 50 pounds from Facebook or Facebook marketplace as most people would call it. 
and I have those really cool pots that my girlfriend got because of my hat and I like them really nice and I am going to do my best to keep those plants looking nice and healthy and in here this was meant to be a storage box for toys for the kids bedroom but this is where I keep the keyboard mouse grip sleeve for the Nintendo Switch it makes a big difference because I feel quite uncomfortable holding the switch purely naked because I have huge hands and then the an Xbox controller and a tiny Xbox controller as well plus a bunch of other stuff like HDMI cables and yeah USB-C cables anything that I might need it all goes in there and thankfully this keyboard is small enough to fit if it had a numerical pad it would not have fit in there so that is this box and next to it here there is a green this is made out of recyclable material not entirely out of recyclable material I think maybe 30% of it and it's green as well and I figured let's leave it out it's too pretty to hide and I want to show you this vase it's a metal vase it used to be a table ornament and I got it because it's made out of metal so if it gets knocked over it's not going to break whereas if I bought a glass one the kids might knock it over but I'm not even going to blame that on the kids because I could knock it over but this one is a lot safer and it has these I have actually forgotten their name it's not reeds but these are great because they are a great substitute to having plants because they don't need watering I've had these for two and a half years and nothing even falls off and it's yeah like they add a nice soft tactile look to a room highly recommended I'm gonna put this back how could I not talk about some of my pop figures these are Harry Potter ones so this accidentally turned into a Harry Potter shrine I already owned these blu-ray movies and it's Harry Potter in ultra HD blu-ray and the format they support is DTX master audio and DTX X and what is it that is that Dolby Atmos oops I knocked them over but DTS master audio is one of the reasons why I also purchased that soundbar because it supports that format and a lot of my blu-rays that's the best format for them and for me the difference between Dolby Digital or Dolby Digital Plus and DTS the master audio is night and day and not a lot of soundbars support that format but I have those there and I also have a Funko Pop game that should have been in English but it's in German it was a game that I purchased on eBay and I bought it in a rush no refund and then when it came I was like oh and I thought there's no point in sending it back paying shipping that would almost be half the cost of what I paid for it so I kept it anyway and it's nice and pretty and it also adds a little bit of height and color to this corner like I don't want the house to look too minimal I want it to be comfortable and cozy but still inviting and playful because uh, I've got kids as well and it's nice to have things around the house that you know inspire them and and also gives them some positive vibes and here is a section of the house that I don't even know how to explain but it's next to the couch first off that plant did have green leaves at some point but I wasn't able to look after it I think it was very temperature sensitive and if the temperature in the house isn't consistent like I sometimes switch the heating off if I'm not going to be in the house for a couple of hours just to keep the costs down but this is a plant that needed a lot more consistency during Christmas I wrapped it in uh, some LED lights and it looked fantastic I have it on top of a stool which is a great idea because it almost doubles its height and I think occasionally having items that reach up towards the ceiling just makes your house uh, uh, look a little bit taller because it leads your eyes all the way up I also added three extra sticks to it that I picked from a tree in my garden to just give it more height for the LED lights and it was also quite nice with the leaves because it was concealing the rear speaker 
I'm not gonna get another plant like that because that was my second one that did not survive. So yeah, I'm not gonna get a third one. And here are the two other nested tables. And this is where I keep my headphones, the Sony XM3s. This stand actually lights up, so it can be plugged in via USB. And it's like a two-tone, like half of it is purple and the other one is blue. I have this bamboo lamp from ikea and i like it because bamboo when it's lit it gives off a warm glow and on really overcast days when we haven't had direct sunshine for a while putting that on adds a bit of a warm cozy glow to the house which is good and then there i have a japanese piece of artwork that a friend of mine did and gave to me and here is the bag that i transport my xbox in because i do carry the xbox between my house and also my girlfriend's house and this is a purpose full xbox bag that also has space for a laptop and ipad it has two compartments in there xbox sits down there and up there you have space for controllers or clothes or anything else i've done a full video about that bag so have a look at it if you are contemplating transporting an xbox between two homes because this also fits an external screen that's also featured in that video and here is the desk <laughs> portable desk or whatever you want to call it oh there's a bit of groove here i think it's maybe it's there for resting not that i would keep my laptop or ipad there because this is just begging to fall down and this is where i keep the balance board when the kids are not using it and in here this is where I just have that box. I purchased something in there that's a gift and I haven't stored it away, so I need to do something about that. And my flight simulator controls and one of my daughter's recent Christmas presents. So this sometimes becomes a bit of a dumping ground, but nature abhors a vacuum. And I feel like it doesn't matter how big your house is, if there is vacant space somewhere, that space will be filled with something. Especially if you have kids. I believe that most problems in life have a simple, low effort, and low cost solution. And the best example is sound bars obstructing the TV. The solution for that is a wall shelf. This is an IKEA luck shelf. It comes in oak, black, and white. And it's super cheap. All I've done is to put rubber feet or door stoppers that you might have on kitchen cabinets between the TV unit and the shelf. Then I put a TV on top. And as you can see, the sound bar uh, is now cleared by the TV. So the view is not really obstructed and the sound bar is wide enough to hide the shelf. So I don't really notice it, but even if I do, it blends in with the unit. Like I, I hardly ever notice it. So therefore, if you have a TV unit and you want a sound bar, look for a shelf it doesn't even need to be an ikea one you can buy shelves almost anywhere of different thickness lengths and height and uh, yeah if you then change your mind or get a different unit you have only spent eight pounds on it which is less than you know like a whole meal at a and it's quite an important solution because sound bars have only been popular in the past five years because in the past tvs were thicker therefore the sound was better but the thinner they get, the worse the sound quality they get. So nowadays, if you buy a TV, you almost have to buy a sound bar or else sound would be really awful. And there are TV cabinets that have space for sound bars, which sounds good, but it's not great in practice, especially if you have a sound bar with upwards firing speakers or sideways firing speakers. So if this was inside a cabinet, it would completely ruin the sound because the sound from some of these speakers on the side we just bounce around in there plus i feel like some of the compartments the sound bars are quite low um almost too low like they're not really like eye level not necessarily that you need to have the sound bar quite high up but i think the kind of closer to eye or ear level you have it the better and as you can see on the back there is enough depth on the shelf for the entire base of the TV. So do check the measurements before you order. 
and this is a uh, 55 inch and it fits on there with no problem there's no sagging or slack and I've also put my Nintendo Switch at the back as well that I rarely play the only game that I play intently on there was Zelda Tears of the Kingdom or is that the name of the recent one yes I think so and that was amazing really amazing game but I also use it to occasionally play casual games that I can play when the kids are around and there's not violence in there or profanity and I can casually play while interacting with others versus playing an RPG game where you're laser focused and you don't want to speak to anyone and it's also there for the kids but this is a really elegant simple and cost effective solution to raising a TV but because the, the other alternative you have is to buy a desktop stand for a TV that's height adjustable but that can look a little bit industrial and that's also additional money to, to spend and this is a lot cheaper so you might as well use the stand that's already on it and put it on top of a shelf of course if you can wall mount the TV then you're not going to have that issue because the soundbar will not be obstructing anything but wall mounting is not an option for everybody and this is a good solution welcome to the evening you're joining me at 7 30. as you can see it's a bit darker than it was during the day and the room has a very different feel i have switched on my electric candles i actually picked them up four days ago for eight pounds it was part of a christmas clearance at b and q and they are powered by two double a batteries and they flicker quite nicely and they're perfectly safe to have around with kids as well so this is where the magic happens and when you're a parent the magic is called rest <laughs> so in the evenings i like to use ambient lighting so i have my bamboo lamp on the floor and yeah i don't really need that much else i just want to unwind and with the pc the um, rgb can be very complimentary it's now at its lowest setting i know it looks a little bit overblown but in person is nice it's just a touch brighter than the candles and it has a nice orange glow uh, meanwhile on camera it probably looks a bit more yellow or white and this is a testament that rgb doesn't need to dominate if you want to it can actually be complementary it can uh, add a little bit of ambient lighting and in this case it chose orange which is quite nice it's a little bit of a paradox though because we buy massive air coolers to keep the pc cool but yet i'm using orange lighting to make it look like uh, the pc has an afterburner or is catching fire really ironic and obviously when the tv is on it's even a little bit more brighter in here as well which means that everyone in here can see one another and i love this lounge either uh, it's during the day or evening and i don't think that i'm missing anything except maybe some artwork on the wall here however the other side of this room does have uh, more pictures in color uh, i do enjoy having this as a bit of a negative space where i can come unwind and there isn't too much going on and funny enough from where i'm sitting the rgb isn't that visible all i can see is the light against the wall uh, from watching tv it's not intrusive at all um, it's not fighting for attention with the tv but it's just facing that other way and if i walk past when i'm fetching a drink like now i can casually glance at the cpu temperature as well and right now i'm having some uh, flavored sparkling water while admiring this glorious view i have the glass panel off right now and i was actually a little bit concerned before i purchased it i was thinking that i might not be able to see the cpu temperature because there might be some glare or reflection on the glass but it's still visible and also the glass tones the brightness down a little bit but even at max setting it's not really that bad it's nice and bright and uh, all facing that way it's not it's not 
looking me in the eye. And even if I sat straight in front um, PC itself, I can see a little bit of the RGB. Um, it is slightly muted because of the 280 mil fans plus some um, mesh as well. And on days when I don't want any RGB, I can switch it all off and all I would see is the temperature and the deep cool logo. I'm super happy with the motherboard. It has two addressable RGB headers and three RGB headers as well. So if you're looking to buy a PC, uh, a lot of flexibility um, and lighting individually, then I highly recommend this motherboard and uh, one of those features that I didn't really consider at the time of purchase, but once I got cracking on uh, all these RGB lights, etc., I really appreciated it. And the software that I use for controlling the RGB is the Gigabyte software. And just out of the box, it allows me to control the Corsair RAM as well. And it's really easy to use. And if you want to, you can even sync the lights and there's a gazillion different patterns that you can choose from like pulsing, flashing, rainbow, uh, even create custom patterns and whatnot. Like the world is your oyster basically. Cool. Now the camera is in the exact position where I sit. So this is the view that I have and here you go. There's the PC, no RGB visible whatsoever. And the TV soundbar, it's a nice two and a half meters distance away, which makes the 55 inch perfect. I could have bought a 65 inch, but I think it would have been a little bit too big for the viewing distance because I wouldn't want to have to pan my eyes left and right. And with regards to the media, I'm now not really missing anything. I have Apple TV 4K, Xbox, PC. I could buy a PS5, but I'll probably not buy one because I've learned that such that some of the titles that I do want to play, like Last of Us and Spider-Man and Ratchet and Clank, they're actually available on PC. So I might play those games on PC instead of buying a second console, which I don't even think I have space for anywhere here. But this is all for me. Thank you very much for watching and like, subscribe and comment. See you in the next video. Bye.